way to open it. Okay, I'm gonna remove the box. And this, what I, they look like an apron. I swear I was about to make a few, and I'm gonna still do, but this is awesome. It's super big. Wow. I hope nobody gets mad if I cut it a little. I'm pretty short. I am so grateful. Uh, I cannot even express it. You go on the side. It has a very fine, smooth surface, although you can see a little bit of green, almost like a hot press watercolor paper. Well, I hope we all agree that we have to give it a go. I am freaking excited about this. Uh, I should open it. Let's go, let's do this. I'm switching to voiceover here. I'm first transferring my drawing onto this new oil pastel paper as I always do. I didn't want to draw directly and risking having to erase on it in case it did some damage to the surface, although I think the paper looks pretty resistant, but since it's the first time that I'm trying it, I want it to be safe. So about the paper, as you can guess, I've sped up the process here because it didn't go really well and um, well it went straight to the trash and this is no fault of the paper i think that the idea that i had in mind was too complicated and required to use the materials that i already know and i'm comfortable with and less experimentation maybe it seemed to me that in order to successfully paint on it i would have to adjust the way that i paint because i do a lot of blending and i have to give it another go or quite a few more goes but I think that less blending and more direct application could work better. I think it could have looked nice but it would be smarter to try something more simple and more sketchy than a full piece like this. But I don't know why I still felt like I wanted a challenge so I went for a green paper this time. I never used it before, but I thought it would create a nice contrast between the pinks and the oranges of the skin and that uh, minty green, kinda. It's a very beautiful green. And somehow, to my surprise, I was ready to throw it too. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think the colors pop very nicely, so I will try it again for sure. Although if I'm honest, I have to admit that the portrait looked a bit crazy for a long time, but I'm glad that I pushed through. I'm sorry about the lighting. I should invest in some studio lights, like those that are for photographers or something of that kind, or something like a softbox, because natural lighting is pretty unreliable, and although it doesn't bother me while I'm painting, it's pretty bad in the video, so I'm sorry again. So there are some questions that I get all the time that I think I could address again. 
Some of them I already talked in other videos or in my Instagram, but I still get them. So here we are. Why do I wear gloves? I use them mostly because I'm recording and I have to touch my equipment all the time, so it's easier for me to remove the gloves, change the battery or change the position of the tripod or whatever, and then I put them back. It's easier than just to have to wash my hands every time. Also, while I was painting this, I had some cuts on my hands and I don't want paint to get in there. Now about the toxicity, um, I'm not an expert, so keep that in mind, but some of the oil pastels in this range contain cadmium and cobalt, but as far as I know, they are made so that they are not easily absorbed through the skin, and because they are not floating particles unlike with soft pastels, as long as you wash your hands well afterwards I think it should be fine. You can also check which ones have it and not to get those if you are concerned. Color recommendations for painting skin tones. The only set that I know about that has a really good color selection for portraits is the Sennelier portrait set of 24 sticks. Again, not sponsored, I just think it's great. And the only reason why I didn't buy the one in the first place was because it wasn't available where I live. But I checked the colors that it contained and I bought all of them open stock. But in general, if you don't want to buy a set, what I do is to get as many peaches, beige type of colors, as well as most, if not all, the browns available in the range. That and some purples. But sometimes having too many choices can be a bit overwhelming if you are not used to it, so I would recommend a smaller set and then adding colors as you need them, but that's just me. I wouldn't go for a really big set right away. Tips for blending. I really think that the paper that you are using plays a big role. I enjoy sanded papers the most, but I also like to use printing paper. So Try to find something that works for you and is within your budget. And of course, the softer and creamier the oil pastel, the easier it will be to blend and to move around. And I find them to blend just the same with or without gloves. Maybe better without them because they are a bit too big and baggy for me and sometimes they create marks I don't want and then I have to remove them. How to avoid muddy colors. There are no big secrets. My biggest tip is to clean your fingers and the sticks all the time. And I mean all the time. Every time I switch colors or right after blending, I wipe my hands and the oil stick. I just have to do it, otherwise everything gets messy. And the other tip is to try not to mix very light and dark colors together or colors with a lot of value contrast. In this painting on her neck, I actually made a big mistake with a dark brown that should have been placed a centimeter away or something. I don't know what I was thinking about, but it took me a lot of effort to fix it. I kind of did, but it was so muddy once I added light colors on it, even trying to remove it, like it was, yeah. My tip really is try not to make mistakes. Yeah, very easy to say. How to make details and fine lines. I think I already talked about it before, but sometimes I get confused with the things that I've said here or the ones that I said on Patreon, so we are gonna go through it again. You have to understand that the fine lines that you can achieve with pencils or a fine brush, you are not gonna be able to make them with oil pastels. At least not the way I use them. Um, maybe there is a way to do it with solvents, but I don't know and I'm not gonna try it. The harder the oil pastel, the easier it is to sharpen and to keep a point, to make fine-ish details, like with Neopastel or Mungio. But you can also do it with the softer types like Sennelier. I just try to shape them into a point by using them tilted instead of shaving them, because that's a bit of a waste. But I do it with Neopastel, for example, because they come blunt. I think it's important to be realistic here and to know that it's much easier to fake details if you are painting large enough. I wouldn't recommend small size portraits, I think it's a lot easier. 
so I wouldn't go smaller than an A4. Okay, and lastly, how do I protect my paintings? I already made a video about this, but at the end of this one I've included a few clips showing you how I prepare it to be stored. I didn't record this, but right after I finished painting, I applied four layers of Sennelier's fixative, and then I covered it with a sheet of glassine. For sketches and small things, I don't use the fixative, but for pieces that I'm gonna put up for sale, like this one, I like to apply a few coats to protect it. Oil pastel never dries, and because of it, until it's put behind the glass, it's quite delicate. And in case you are interested, I just updated my website with some of the paintings I have available, like this one, and the link is in the description box. And since I'm already self-promoting, I will add that I just opened commissions again to have enough time before Christmas, so that they can be Christmas gifts. And that's it for today. I hope you liked it, and see you soon. Have a nice day. Bye bye.